How's it going everybody? This is Vic the Bush. Today I'm gonna to talk about the concept of capital efficiency and how it helped me retire early. What do I mean by capital efficiency? If you start off with $100, some people would just take it and spend it and the next day have nothing left. Other people, maybe they would save it, they'll still have the same $100 and yet others will take the same amount of money, buy something, resell it and they'll come back with $120. But even if you're not earning money with every dollar that you spend, at least you can get the most value out of it. This is what I mean by capital efficiency. This video is brought to you by Moomoo, the commission-free trading app. If you sign up and deposit $100 into your trading account, you can get five free shares of stock. And if you deposit $1,000, you can get 15 free shares of stock. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. First, let's talk about products. We all use a lot of it. Most people would have bought it brand new from a store or you might have bought it used maybe you bought it at a thrift store maybe you got it on Facebook marketplace Craigslist or maybe it's even a hand-me-down so based on where you get it from this is how much you would have spent on it right used is a bit cheaper and if you get it for free it's free you also want to consider how long you're gonna use it if you bought something for thousands of dollars and you use it only for one month and then toss it aside then it's not very capital efficient. Being capital efficient, you would take that product if you know you're not gonna use it and you sell it, maybe you would have taken a loss. And oftentimes in my own personal dealings with just using products and selling them out, sometimes I even make money after using it for many years. Or you can think of the product as something you bought, you used it for like 10 plus years. You essentially used up the entire value of the product itself if it ever breaks. You fix it with minimal costs, and this is very capital efficient. So the whole idea is to buy things for as little as possible, sell it as soon as you know you're not gonna use it for a very long time to recuperate the cost from it. And the difference between how much you sell it for and how much you buy it for would be either a profit or a loss. So I want you guys to think about every single product that you own. It's something that you're bringing into your life maybe permanently, but oftentimes very temporarily. You use it, you take care of it, and eventually it's time to let go. And I like to think of this more like a life rental. When you buy something, you're not actually paying the entire list price of the item because if you eventually sell it, the difference there is the rental cost. Even if you, you know, use it for like 10 years, then you can divide it by 10 and go, okay, every single year it costs me $10 a year to use this thing. Name brand things. I'm not talking about luxury brands or anything, just things that have a brand name. They tend to keep value a little bit better than no brand name at all, right? Like, you know, on Amazon, there's a lot of those where you can't even pronounce the name. Those things drop in value greatly. So sometimes when you buy a no name brand thing, you can think of it as you're buying it and as soon as you use it for the first time, the entire residual value of the item goes to zero because you can no longer sell it. With that in mind though, you might be more prone to buying something not the cheapest of the cheapest. You might buy something that has a brand so that it'll keep its value. Capital efficiency flows over to what I eat also, especially when going out to eat. When you live around a certain area, for long enough, you tend to have eaten almost everything in the area and then things start getting boring. In the Bay Area, most restaurants are really, really high priced. The quality isn't that good. If you want good quality, well, you end up having to pay a very, very high price. And for me, that usually isn't really worth the cost. That's not to say that I don't go out at all. I just go out more minimally than if I were traveling, where I feel like the value to price ratio, it's a lot higher. As an example, let me talk about Kobe beef. It's a very, very expensive beef. If you go to Las Vegas, it's gonna cost you about $300 for, I don't know, three ounces, just one meal. You can actually go to Kobe, Japan, eat almost an identical thing for like $100 or less. Why is it more expensive in the States? It's because they have to import it. And by the time they import it, not many people sell it and there's a huge market. If you're craving for Kobe beef, yeah, you're gonna have to pay $300. But if you can go to Kobe, which will cost you a lot to go there, but if you like going to Japan, you know, you can just wait until you get there before having your Kobe beef and you're gonna get a lot better value if you buy it there. I was just thinking about my past purchases and I just realized that I have never financed anything other than the mortgage. I guess I paid some interest 
into my student loan. So that was thousands of dollars. Let that sink in. It just means that I never finance anything. I'm not paying other people interest. When you're paying interest, that money goes into someone else's pocket. They lent you the money and they're collecting interest on this. Now the ultimate in capital efficiency is if you buy something, you actually get a return on it. It pays for itself and then it starts paying you back. Whenever I recognize something that's gonna pay me back in a reasonable amount of time, I just jump on it. Even if it costs like hundreds of dollars, I'll just be like, okay, buy it right now. A Tesla is not exactly gonna pay you back. It's not gonna pay for itself. But in my experience, it has saved me probably like $2,000 every single year. So if you're gonna drive it for like 10 years, well, that's like $20,000 off the sticker price. Tesla has reinstated the referral program when you buy a Tesla. So check out my referral link down in the video description below. And if you buy a Model 3, you can get points, which then you can exchange for supercharging miles, 500 of them. I have a small scale do-it-yourself solar, which you know, costs about like three, $400. And I estimated that it's already paid me back. The return on investment was around three years and I've had it for longer than three years now. So those kind of things, yes, it cost me some money to buy initially, but after owning it for a while, it starts just saving me money on an ongoing basis going forward. Work equipment is something that can pay yourself back immensely, but it's not quite transparent how it does it. But when you get really quality equipment, it just makes you work much better, much faster. It's important to look at where your money goes in your daily expenses. For example, let's say you go out for coffee all the time. I hate to use this example because it's so beaten to death, but you can get better quality than Starbucks coffee if you buy some boutique brand coffee beans and make your coffee at home. Now you gotta learn how to make a latte at home. You gotta buy the machine, you gotta go buy the beans. But by the time that you're done, let's say it's $4 per coffee and you drink one every day, you can make the cost of the coffee machine back within like a year or two. So think of it this way. If you do something a lot and you're spending a lot of money into it, maybe you might not be able to replace it completely because maybe the version that you make at home is not as good. But at least if you make some version of it and then you just have it at home, you might not go out to have that outside as much. Take shabu shabu for example. I think maybe not a lot of people know what it is. It's basically sliced meat and you dip it into plain water with like a seaweed inside and then you dip it in a sesame sauce. It's a Japanese thing. But I love eating shabu shabu and back in college, I like to eat it like once a week or so. So I decided, hey, let me get a meat slicing machine and try to duplicate some of that at home. So in my previous meat slicing short video, some people did not understand how it saves money. Pricing of your meat might differ depending on where you live. In the Bay Area, if you buy sliced ribeye, it costs $23.99 for USDA choice. For a New York steak, it costs $7.99 a pound when it's not sliced. So if you just buy this, bring it at home, and slice it yourself, and let's say it's just one pound, you save $16 right there. And I'm a habitual shabu shabu eat it. I eat it like once a week. So for a $380 machine, there are a lot cheaper ones. I started off with a $100 machine and because it saved me so much, I'm like, hey, let me buy a nicer one because it saves me so much money so quickly, I can afford to buy a nicer machine. If you eat it only two times a month, the savings alone can pay for the machine within one year, which is incredibly short. Some people have commented that you can ask your butcher to slice your meat thinly for you. If anyone has an experience of habitually asking their butcher, let's say every other week of slicing shabu shabu meat for them from a ribeye steak. Please let me know down in the comments section below and let me know which grocery store and where. I hope this video helps you guys retire early being super duper capital efficient. It's more about making the most out of whatever money that you earn, whichever profession that you have. Who wouldn't wanna get more for their efforts? Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more.